instance method whose job it will be is to get a string and return whether or not that string exists in the array of strings called words that is a property on our model. Who wants to give it a shot? Jason, give it a shot. Why well, would we just call it get? Nice. And is there going to be a return type? Nice. Thanks. What are we missing? Nice. So we just need to tell it, hey, by the way, return whatever happens here. But now it's going to protest with us. Or maybe not. It should protest. All right. I lied. Um, Oh, never mind. Because we were using an optional string before, but now we are not. There's no protest. Everyone's on board. Everyone loves it. We love it, don't we? Um, cool. So Michelle has offered a great refactor to our code. Let's take verifying the guess out of the controller and have the model do it. I go to my view controller. Instead of looking at its words and seeing if it contains that, we're instead going to say current game dot verify guess for the guess input text. Let's see how that works. It doesn't like that. It's because it said very text, very guess, verify guess. Still doesn't like it. Did I hit enter? I did hit enter. Now it doesn't like that. Let's see what else is going on. Uh, man shift K. Don't worry about it. So the text editor was not adapting to our text as quickly as possible. But this returns a bool, but because current game is optional, Calling it on current game gets us an optional pool. Does everyone see how that works? So all I'm saying here to be really lazy is if that verify current guest didn't even work for our current game, just return false. Nice. And now we've gotten some info from the model. Let's use that info to update the, the view. So we'll change the text in our label or we'll change the text in our label if it's incorrect. Great. So we have seen if the guess is correct. I'll just leave it in, sorry. If true, give them a message that they were correct and then add that guess into the appropriate text view. Cool. What do we mean by the appropriate text view? Let's look at our text views again. Mm. Mm. How about Kevin? Yeah, so right now we were checking if the guess was correct. And we said if it is correct, put it in the appropriate text view. That's what we said. This guy? Yeah. 
Nice. So check. I think it's a little different than word count. Okay. So let's say input text. Input text. Dot. Count. That's what we're gonna look at, right? Okay. How many different situations can there be? How many different text fields do we have? Nice. So what can we create here that's some kind of conditional thing? Nice, let's create a switch. I'm getting really cramped in here, so I'm going to break this functionality out into a function called um, determine or let's say set add answer to text field, which is going to take in as its input, input text. Let's define that and put the switch in there. So I'm going to make a beautiful little private function. called add, I forgot what we called it, let's go look at it, add answer to text field. Thank you. I can't get words right, I'm very sorry. Add answer to text view, it's going to have an answer in it, that answer is going to be of what type? It's going to be a string. And this thing's job is going to be to literally to add our answer to a specific text view depending on what the length of that string is. So it's not going to return anything. It's just the job that updates. It's a job. Its job is just to update the UI, which is good because that gives it just one responsibility. I love it. So let's create our switch. Switch is going to be not on answer, but Tia, we want to switch on the length of the answer. What property can we look at on a string to see how long it is? Nice. So we're going to switch on answer.count. I did hear you say that. Did you say it? OK, cool. I can hear you. So case, case just means if the thing we're switching on literally equals that. Case 3, what do we want to do when the case is 3? Anthony. Cool. And let's just two-click on this to see what the outlet's called. Three letters text view. Three letters text view dot text dot append. Awesome. And we're just going to append answer. Nice. All right, that's one case. Who wants to run me through the rest of the cases here? Angela. Cool. Nice. Nice. What do we see is going to happen for five and six? Same thing is going to happen for 5 and 6, right? 
maybe we could break that behavior out into something else later. For now, we're just going to have each case. There's definitely a better way, because we see that there's a lot of code being repeated. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say five letters text view dot text dot append uh, answer. Let's say case six six letters text view dot text dot append answer. Nice. You know, if I try to build this, it's going to yell at me because there's no default. So answer.count is an int. We've only defined four ints that this switch case deals with. So I need a default case for any other int that it might encounter. Default. Print. Oh well. Nice. So, if the guess is correct, we're going to update the message to the user and then we're going to add to the appropriate text view the answer that they gave. If I really want this to be helpful, What's something else I should update in the UI so that I know what game I'm playing? Because right now I don't even know what game I'm playing, Adam. Huh? So right now we are playing a game. We've got something assigned. Yeah. Yeah, but let me show you the issue I'm having. I don't know what game I'm playing. I don't know how to figure out if I got it right or wrong. Yeah, it doesn't even, I don't even know what letters I have available to me. So it's just saying I got everything wrong, but I'm like, this is not a fair game because my interface isn't helping me. It isn't telling me anything. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, let's look at it. What specific property on our model were you looking at? Yeah. Okay. If you look at this. Sweet. So let's use letters from our struct. That sounds good to me. Let's have the view controller get those letters. And then on that top label, Start off by telling us what available letters we have. Ready? I'm going to say that every time we set the current game, we update show available letters dot text equal to uh, current game how can we get that to work self dot current game dot letters so literally every time we set the game, which starts at the beginning of the game, and maybe later on, maybe later on we'll have a way to reset the game, 
every time we set the game, I'm going to set up this top label to show all the letters. This label will also change based on our input, but for right now I want to know what all the letters are so I can see if I'm getting them right. Before I go any further, I'm going to make some commits. Isn't that exciting? We've kind of gone too far. You should try to commit every 25 to 30 minutes. You can say, damn, that's what I did, and it works. So let's check my git status. Look at everything that changed. It's a lot. Um, let's check the diff in our test twist info. Great. It's only a small change, so I'm just going to add that. Then I'm going to commit and say create verify guess method on model. Nice. Let's check our status again. Let's check the diff on models that and word data. Cool. I changed it back to a class. Then I added a static function that gets a random game. I'm going to add model slash word data. And if you look back up here, the only file that changed in models is word data. So I could just add the folder. Git add models, git commit, adds model static method to create new game. I know. Ugh. Um, check our status again. Let's check the diff in the view controller. So I've got a did set. I've got current game. I've got some other stuff. There's a whole lot of things. I also see that there are some changes in the storyboard. Do you want to see what the diff for the storyboard looks like? Uh, diff base. Oh, crap. It's some stuff I don't understand. Um, if you remember, I told you all these things are is keys and values that it assigns to your UI elements in Interface Builder. I'm just going to add the storyboard. I'm going to say, if, I, if you remember, uh, resized label. That's all we did. All right, now let's add that view controller in parts. It's so exciting. All right. Um, I'm not going to do that yet. I am going to hit S to split this. So first, that looks like a good place to do it. However, we didn't add current game, so I kind of need to figure out what I'm doing here. Let's start over. Let's look at the diff. Isn't this annoying? It is. So I'm going to think through this. I'm going to add the current game. I'm going to make sure that show available letters label is in is already in our git history, which it looks like it is because it said it said that's unchanged. So I'm going to git add minus p. I'm going to add the current game. I'm going to split this whole big hunk. I'm also going to add where we set current game. I'm not going to do this because it has nothing to do with current game. I'm not going to do this because it has nothing to do with current game. I'm going to try to split this, which it's not going to let me do. So for right now, I'm just going to say, no, I don't want to use it. My commit here would say something like, uh, creates game in view controller cool let's go through it again um, let's say right now I just want to add what's at the end so adds pick new game and adds way to determine which 
text view to add, I know. So just this information, git commit, adds functions to VC that get new game and add text of answer to views, to text views. All right. Still got some stuff, but we have a whole git log that we can now trace back, see everything that happened. Sounds good to me. Let's keep going. Let's run that game, those changes we just made with this did set. Nice. So now I see all the letters I have. What's a word that we make here? She. Now when I hit enter, it should update in here. But the problem is, it gets added at the end of that string. So now, to make sure this works correctly, I gotta go to my storyboard and delete all that text. But the space is still the same. So, what we can do to make sure we see them is we could give them all a background color. Let's make them light gray so that we see them all. I know. I love it. Now let's run it. See what happens. Oh. Ah, different game. That's cool. Hiss. Nice. His. Nice. Why? Oh. What's it doing that's a little funky here? It's not separating them on different lines. Cool. Let's figure out a way to do that. How do you want to do that, Ayula? What's that? Like that. Let me go back. Cool. Sounds good to me. Let's see if it works. Let me do that for all of them before I get too overzealous. Oh wait. The did set. Here is the did set. So let me run this again. We got a game. Tells us what the letters are. Don, that's one. Don, nice. Con, cone, oh no. Cone, coed, node. What other words you got? Nice. Code, cod is a fish. And nod. Non. Condo. Whoa. All right, you can fight with whoever created the data here. Oh, good point. So maybe we'll update in the UI later so that it will Remove the letters we've already guessed. Mm -mm, okay. Um, okay. 
it conned. Nice. Six letter word, big point. Can we take a silent vote? Do you want me to keep going on this? Uh, what is the other option? Such a good question. That's okay. Sorry, Tia, can you ask that louder? I cannot hear you, sorry. Oh, let's see, is there a way to do it anonymously? Yeah, do the close your eyes and raise your hands there. All right, close your eyes. Um, you all work on it. I will push this up to GitHub and you can all work on it from here. We have a great framework for a project. And I think, maybe you have to close your eyes when you vote. Hold on. We have a really good framework for a project. We're set up really, really nicely. And I think the rest of this stuff is just some steps to go through. Adam, what was your question? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say the first place to check is if your outlet is connected to your view controller in the proper way. Okay, we can talk a little more later. For now, everyone close your eyes. Even you, Angela. Even you, Phoenix. <laughs> Even you, B. All right. Think about something that makes you very happy. It could be popcorn. It could be going outside. It could be not being in this room specifically in terms of location. Let's take a vote. Raise your hand if you would like to do something else. Ooh. Raise your hand if you would like to keep going on this. Okay, I think the keep going on this is habit. For the do something elsers, do you have an idea what that something else would be? Because maybe we can incorporate it into this. Jocelyn. Stage three. I cannot hear you at all, I'm so sorry. You only got up to stage three? Okay, how about this? I get a message if it was correct or had any errors. Okay, we have completed stage one here. Let's make the rest of this optional. If you want to work on yours, go ahead. If you want to stick around and I'll keep going through it, that's totally fine too. If you want to work on other code or get help from a mentor or an IA if you see them, then go for that. Um, does that answer your question? Sorry. Or would you like to stick around for stage three? Because we have not gotten to it yet, so I don't want to do it. Okay, let's take a five minute break and regroup. I want to see if I can start over everything. I feel like this whole project is You're starting over? Yeah, one did everything. Oh no. I already started doing it. This is copy code. Right? Copy, copy and code? Yeah, it's copy code. Oh no. Mine. I don't want to touch that anymore. I want to delete it. Okay. Stuff. Keep going. How can I, like, because then I'm going to need to put this, whatever I have, on the new one now. 
What's that? Because, you know, I don't, it's like, okay, see this? I, I did this weekend. I, I stored it in my, my variable, right? It mm -hmm. was stored. For some reason, it's working. But it's not even working anymore. But it's still working for some reason. Okay, so. Why can I not access user stored in Word? What's because it's not being used within a function or a block of code. It has to be used in a, in a function. Mm -hmm. This is like this is a definition of a class or a struct, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I get, I get it now. Yeah. But, okay, cool. So I have these files, right? Mm -hmm. I have two files in Word data. I wanted to see. See this, I have it this on some other freaking file. Mm -hmm. For some reason I can only get this code for it. So I made like a twist a twist model every time I call it, I check for the values I get from the data model. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. But um how can I just like you see this? I wanna do I want this to be just the data. Mm -hmm. Then I wanna make another file with this struct. Then I want to do another file, which is going to be all the all the functions that I want to be doing. I'm just going to be calling it. What are those functions for? Like get get random word. Get uh, comp check if random word is equal to. So why would you want to do that in a different file rather than on the model itself? Uh, I did it on this file, but it's just, I feel like it's you know to. Like I don't know why I get I can get random get random here, but then this doesn't work very much on the other one. Like I can just do all this in that in that word that data, right? Yeah, of course you can, but it's not separating out the models. What? You're not doing separate things with your models here. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Okay. I wanted to do a text with model with all the functions. Sure. I but those functions would be, oh wait, hold on. Those functions would be specifically for things happening in a game, not in all of the games. Like that's the separation here. So all of the games? Yeah. So there are three games in your data, right? Ultimately that's what they are. Yeah. Here in this class, if you're gonna use this class or the struct from the other file, what that's job is to do is to have a word count have letters that you're guessing and have the words that those letters can create and so that game should only relate to the information it has so for example right here to get a random get a random game yeah you should be getting that random game from the model yeah and then that is like if you look at word data what's the return of get random uh, my word, which is... What's the type? Uh, it's a it's test twist info. Right. So the return type is test twist info. So you don't want to be using that in the test twist info model. Instead, you just want to be using an instance, right? This returns an instance of test twist info. You want to use that instance wherever in your code you're actually going to use an instance of that. Which so wherever you want to create a game, you put it in the controller. And I would say to avoid confusion, if you go up, you gotta pick one. Either use your test twist info or use your text twist info. But like, you see how confusing that gets when you have the two? Right? Yep. To be honest, I don't know. It's like, because this is what the file, the other file came with. Yep. And I can just do that, and then. Can I, put, can I implement all these things in this one, though? Exactly. It can work, that's that would work. Because, yeah, if you take a look, all words is just an instance. It uses that same get random. It's just an instance of that. I don't think you should use all words. I think you should get rid of that. Because all that's doing is getting an instance of this thing. And then check input. Instead of all words, what property are you looking at on a test twist info? 
Get a twist. Get a what are you What are you looking at? Tell me, like, without looking at the camera. What is this doing? Text twist. I don't. Okay. And what's the what what property is it specifically looking at in that text twist? Uh, string array. Okay, so it's looking at the array. Which of these is it? Words. Which of these properties? Great. So this is an instance method. All you have to say is if words that contains. And so this gets called on any instance of test twist. So from your data, when you create a random game, that's an instance of this. And on that game, you can call check input. Then like I'm gonna expand that standards. Because when I call this function outside, it's gonna be on the variable that I I created, which has instance. I already have all the stuff that I can it's up in here, right? So I can do letters, I can check the letters, I can check the word code also using this. Mm -hmm. So with an instance of twist, test twist info, which if you go to word data, ultimately you're going to get from calling this function. So, but I don't know why I had to do this. You don't have to do that. Um, what you ultimately want to be doing is, do you remember the difference between that and this? The static function lets you say, hey, I don't even need an instance of word data. Instead, on word data itself, so on the type, that's why we call it a type method or a static method, just do what this is. So just by referencing word data dot get random. Wait, why, wait, why did I need to do that though? You don't even have to use it here. You want to use this in your controller to get an instance of test twist info. Because I was doing this with Sunny yesterday and it wasn't working until we did that. I'm not sure if it was because it was a class or something. It's because you created a variable in the global scope so every file could look at it, but that is definitely not best practice. Okay, so then like if... Let's, this let's work, get back to this and then yeah. we can talk more later. Yep. Hi everyone. What's going on? You want to eat for a second? You should definitely. You guys skinny shaming me? Because I'm not skinny. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your concern. I will eat as we go. Thank you. When am I going to put this on GitHub? Okay, let me put this on GitHub right now. For whoever had GitHub questions, questioners about GitHub, I'm going to just do it right now. Say that again? Hell yes, you do. But let's first commit all of my changes. All right. I did something in my storyboard. Who remembers? I think I cleaned up those text views. So I'm going to git add minus p, those changes. So if you look through this in your git commits, I know it's annoying, but you'll see that this is a text view, and then nested in it is a whole bunch of stuff. All I did was I changed this thing called text. So I'm just going to say that. I'm going to say no, git commit, changed, default, text in text views. Nice. Now I can go look at that later. Git status, still got something else to do. Let's have a look. OK. Um, I am not going to add this yet, because this is the big old function that we're working on, the one that gets triggered when you hit return. So I'm not going to add this yet. But let's look at our git log. I've got so many things here. It's so nice. You can definitely backtrack on everything we did in each commit. Cool. So now, let us set up a new repository on GitHub. 
Just because I have done git init locally does not mean there's anywhere to send it to. Super important. I did git init, that initializes my local repository. Local means on your machine. Now I need to make a new repository on GitHub. I'm gonna call this something. Oh. Uh, cool. Text view, text field, delegate, run through. I run through it. Public. I ran through it. I'm going to keep it public. Super important. I'm not going to initialize it with a readme because then it creates a git history that includes a file that I do not have locally. It should be a pain in the, you know what, to resolve. So do not initialize it. Do not add these for right now. Create a repository. Nice. It gives me some instructions. It says, if you've done this kind of thing before, I don't know, maybe we haven't. Or create a new repository on the command line. We've actually already done that. Or push an existing repository from the command line. That's it. That's the one. This first line is adding something called a remote. It's adding a remote called origin. Origin is just kind of a generic term that people use to say the place on the web where we push it. You can have multiple remotes. This one is just called origin. Origin is not like a special word. It's just the one that people use all the time. Great. So from within my Git repository, I've still got things that I need to change, but that's fine for right now. I'm going to say git remote add origin, and then this is the web address for where origin is. GitHub.com slash David Lawrence R slash text field that text field delegate run through dot git. Great. That dot git just is this exact exact web address uh, web address dot git. I hit enter. The way I can look up my git remotes. So git. Git remote, we use add to add a new remote. If I say git remote, it'll just print out the names of whatever remote I have. If I say git remote minus uh, dash v, so option v, it'll show me where that actually is. So it'll show me the address, where on the web it is. And it'll say these things called fetch and push. That's for when I use git push, it's going to say if you push to origin, it's going here. If you fetch from origin, which is something for later, it's going to come from here. So now I see where my git remotes are. Let's go back to GitHub and says, oh, now you can just push by doing this. Great. Git push dash u, which stands for upstream. Don't have to worry about that right now. Then the name of or the name of the remote and then the branch in remote. Let's push it. Nice. So now when I go back to that web page and I refresh it. It's going to have a repository with all those changes. It's got my description here. It's got my 14 commits that I can look through. Look at all those commits. Sounds great. I could add a readme or I could create a readme in the, in the command line. Let's not worry about that right now. That's Git. We can do this every day. I have no problem with reviewing Git every day. Like, if you have questions, that is a professional skill that is as important as knowing what a function does. So we can work on Git all the time. For now, we're going to keep going. I'm going to add some stuff. Going to look back at our code. Do you remember our code? I know. It's been so long. Um, so when we hit return, 
show a message that says correct or incorrect. If it's correct, add, an, add the answer to our text view. That's great. We've got that all set up. So I'm going to say that's part one. If the guess is incorrect, don't update. Great, we did that. Boom. How to determine which text view to add it in? Check word.count. Boom, we did that. If it is true, give a message that they were correct and then add that guess to the appropriate view. Boom, we did that. So we did all of part one here. I'm gonna get rid of this print statement because it does what we expect. Awesome. So this is what happens when we hit return in our text field. Step two, create another lab a label that represents the letter bank of available letters. Phoenix, thank you. Check. We did it. Create another label that represents the letter bank of available letters. That was Phoenix's wonderful label here called showAvailableLetters.text. We said that when we set the current game, we're going to update the text of that label with the letters that are available in the game. That was super helpful to do before for testing. So let me encourage you in the future, read through the entire assignment, and if you think something should go before another step, do that. If it's gonna be helpful for you, do that, because we were kind of flying blind there. You know, we were flying, without this label, we were flying blind. And that kind of sucked. All right, we've got a label. Only allow the user to type letters that are inside the letter bank. So let's call this game.letters the letter bank. How can we do this? B, do you have any ideas? Any ideas at all? Yes. So now what we want to be doing is, if we look at the GIF, this part. Actually, no, it's even before that. We want to make it so that if they type a letter that's not in our letter bank, it doesn't do anything. How can we at least look at what they're typing? Does anyone have a method, maybe a delegate method? Adam? <laughs> All right, so we want to do the second part of stage two. It says only allow the user to type questions that are inside the letter bank. Those are the available letters that you're going to guess. I really want to wake Jason up, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Levi, do you know a delegate method that we can use to just look at the input as it's given to us? So in our text field, okay, you do not. Does anyone have one? Let's, uh, let's just look it up. Did begin editing. Let's take a look. So before we make it do anything, let's just define it and have it print out maybe what's been entered. So we can see what happens and see if it serves our purposes. Sounds festive. Sounds festive. Thank you. Okay, let's implement func text field did begin editing. Nice. So again, this is a delegate method. Type. That means anything that uses this view controller as its delegate can call this function. When does this function get called? When the text field did begin editing. Nice. So let's, for now, just print out uh, that text field. Nope. Text field dot text. Let's see if this does what we want. Because what we want it to do right now is we'd like it to update every time we type something. So let's make sure this is the exact right function. Launch our app. Click in here. Typey, 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 typey. So this might not be the one. This is for stopping you from, yes. You and, okay, so I don't think this is the function we want. 
because. Anyone have an answer why? Maybe we can look at it. its definition. Tell the delegate that editing began. So not watch the, for what they are editing it with, but instead say that someone just began editing. Maybe this looks at the first responder. Maybe this isn't the one we want because it's not keeping track of what we wanted to use. Do you have a different suggestion, Rod? Text view. Sorry, I'm really bad at this. Text field. Should change characters, characters. Text field should change characters in range. Range is an NS range. What is that? Replacement string is a string. Oh my god, what is all this stuff? What we can do is we can look it up. Cool. So do you see, before we look it up, how important the signature of this function is? It's just calling something that's called text field, but in the argument, it's saying, What's happening here is it should change characters in something called a range. Okay. So it's not called text field should change characters in range, but it's a function called text field that does something specific, getting an argument that is an NS range. Whoa. Let's figure out what an NS range is. A structure used to describe a portion of a series, such as characters in a string or objects in an array. What? Oh, maybe we want to look at characters in a string. That makes sense to me. So let's start looking at range, which is of type NS range. See if there are any helpful functions. Hmm. I don't think so. It's telling me that each thing must be at an index that's an int. So I'm not going to use contains there. So I'm not going to say in the range of letters. That's fine. Hmm. Let's do something really lazy. Are you ready? Let set letters equal set that is made from uh, letters. Let's see how this works. Is it going to work? Probably not. Return true. It doesn't like that. Let's see why it doesn't work. Use of unresolved identifier letters. What am I using wrong here? There's no letters on our view controller. Instead, it's current games letters. So I have to get a set of letters from current game. Let set letters equal a set made from current games letters. Huh, how can I fix it? Interesting. I can use nil coalescing because those letters are optional because the current game is optional. I could just say it's an empty set of letters. So if current game doesn't have any letters, return an empty set. So I've got a set made from the letters of that game. Nice. Now when I look at set letters, it is a set of string.element, I guess. Let's see how we can use that.
What do I want to do here, Michelle? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It will. That's a really good point. You have a different approach because that could be a better idea. Hello. Hello. Problems and solutions. So the question was, since a set makes each element unique, why are we doing that as opposed to another way? We could do it that array characters equal current game dot letters dot split at empty string. And that's going to split our array by letter. Let's see what the separator is. Oh, shut up. Mm. What's that? Wrapping a string type. I love it. That's so interesting. Let's see how it goes. Oh. Yeah. But I want to make an array here for a specific reason. So I'm going to just see if I can do this instead. I don't know. It's kind of hacky. It's probably a different way we could do it. It's hacky. Well, what this does is it's going to separate the letters individually into an array. And let's look at that array. Array car string that subsequence. Interesting. Contents of sequence. Let's print array.car and see what that is. So anytime I change the text in the text field, this function is going to get triggered. Right now I just want to see what happens when this function is triggered. And if I'm looking at the correct letters, I'm going through this step by step rather than saying, oh, I've got 95 things I'm trying to do. Let's make sure they all work in order. Let's start with step one. So when I start typing in here, I should see something happen. And we get a fatal error. That's what happened. Fatal error. Can't form a character from an empty string. Whoa. You learn something new every day. All right. Now, letters.split. It's not doing what I want. Does anyone have maybe a different array method they could suggest? Angela? Current game dot letters is a string. Do array over that. Nice, let's find out. Let's see if it builds. Uh, why not? Can't form a character. That was the old error. Value of type. Hmm. Must be unwrapped. Let's try the empty string here. So the reason I'm lazily using an empty string here is I'm going to check if the, uh, the last character in our input matches anything in the letters of the game. If I use an empty string here, nothing's ever going to match. So we're safe on that end. If our letters, if we don't get the information for current game dot letters correctly, that's why it's optional, then instead it's going to use the value empty string. And later on what we're going to do is we're going to look through the letters and see if the last input 
matched them. So I'm going to instead call this array letters. So it's more descriptive. And let's see, Angela, what happened. Now, click in there. If you hit the trash button here, it gets rid of that output from there. Bless you. Great, so every time I type something, I see all of the letters. Awesome. So I'm able to access letters. I've got an array. And now, all I want to do is say, for the last thing that was typed, if it's not in, if the last character or the last letter that was typed is not in the array letter, Now this replacement string comes into play. What this says is what you should return when something is typed. So our long-term goal here, after we do a whole bunch of things, is to, if it was typed, if the letter typed was not in empty, is not in array letters, sorry, you should not let the user uh, or it should not appear. So if my letters are C, D, E, N, N, O, and I type a Y, this function will give us the ability to not let that Y appear altogether. How do we feel about that? Cool. Let's start with the case that our let's start with the case that we want to see if a letter is in this array. So let's find out how we can use this function to get the last character that was typed. Because that's what we want to look for. We want to look up a text field function specifically called should change characters in. And right now, all we want to be looking at is the last character. So let's Google that rather than fishing around and trying to figure it out. Text field should change characters in, whatever. Let's just say last character. I want to figure out how to get that. How this thing works in Swift. Interesting. What is that? Stack Overflow? Nice. Oh no. Try this in Swift. Method still gets called before I get a value. Hmm. Interesting. Text field should change characters in range. If I let the text equal the text field's text, and the text range equal a range using range. Are you all familiar with range? I think you've used the range before, right? Cool. Nice. So let's see if we can't let familiar range, familiar type of range equal range ns range. Let's see if that works. And let's print familiar type of range. Our build failed. That's because I put the round thing in there. Oh. How do I adjust this, Angela? Mm. 
We just want to trigger this function. What's the UI action to trigger it? I am um, eating green thing, sorry. Anthony, so I want to now test if this specific thing worked, where I converted something of type NS range that I'm not familiar with into a range, which I am familiar with. And then I just print out what the result of converting that is. What do I have to do in the user interface to call this function? Cool, let's type something. Do you all see what is changing each time I type something? The range. Let's see when I go back to zero. Cool. So all that's happening here is I'm creating a range. What does that range say? It's going from 15 all the way to less than 15. Not super helpful. Here? Moving to a different letter, like that. Like if I'm moving around in there? Okay. <coughs> So we've got a function, does some stuff, that's very nice. Let's see if we can figure out, if you look at the range, let me start from the beginning of my typing again. So the first thing, I get a range of zero dot dot less than zero. The second thing I get is, I get one dot dot less than one. If I keep going, it goes up by one. So we can think of the characters that we're getting here as if they are laid out in the indices of an array. The very first thing I type gets me the range from zero to less than zero. Second thing gets me one. So if I can somehow get this lower bound value, if I can get this number at the beginning of the range, then I can know exactly where I should be looking to determine if I'm going to insert or not insert a character. It's weird as hell. So let's see if there's something on range that Let's me see that. Something called an end index. I wonder if there's a lower bound, there's a start index, there's an upper bound. Which of those do you think I could use to get the very first thing in the range? I love it. Let's try using start index. So I'm going to print out each time the start index. Let's make sure that the first character corresponds to a start index of zero. The second character corresponds to a start index of one. This NS range thing, you're gonna run into a lot, so we should use it. Isn't that cool? I'm sorry, it's less cool than most things usually are. I really do apologize. All right, let's type some stuff. So output that, F, A, J, H, G, K, if I delete them, great, I go back to zero, P, Q, I, T, all right. So we don't really know what NS range is, we converted it to a range. And it seems like it's working like an array in terms of what it refers to. Let's see if we can use that to update the last thing typed. I 
And what we want to do is we want to look at the text in our text field and we want to look at the very last thing in it, which is probably going to correspond to this start index. And we want to say, if that is not in this array of letters, then do not add it. So maybe add it as an empty string. Any ideas? What's a good starting point? Maybe let's look at textfield.txt. Maybe let's look up how to use NS range or range to get the last character in a text field. Let's use Google. How to get last character in text field Swift. Boom. How do you get the last character of a string without using array on Swift? Text box cal. I don't know. Maybe this will help. Let's see. How do you get la how do you use last to get the last character? Whoa. Last care is our string dot last. Nice. Cool. No? You don't want to do it? Okay. So for math, let's say let, oh boy, character equal text field dot last, sorry, text field dot text dot last. The text is optional, so we need to use optional chaining. If let last equal, and I could just do this here, if let that equal that, if array letters dot contains last character, Let's see what happens. Let's see what the return stuff does in this function. Return true. Else return false. Let's see if this does what we should do. I don't know. I've never coded before. All right, so got my text field. Let's have a look through text field. It's not letting me add anything. That sucks. I guess this isn't working the right way. All right, so what I tried to do was I tried to check if array, array letters contains last character. Let's print out what last character is each time and see if it's doing the thing we want it to do. So it looks like it is. But what do you notice? So I'm typing E right now. Let me tell you that. What is it printing out here? Cool. So I'm typing O now. and still printing out I. What we're doing is we are literally getting whatever the last character here is. So we're not getting the input. Instead, it's just looking at the last character. And now we're kind of stuck. Damn. Rod, do you want to walk us through what you did to help us figure this out? 
Okay, cool. Yeah. I was hoping you did. Okay. That's okay. It's just me. Cool. Honestly, I tried, you know. It's almost like in coding, you'll run into a wall sometimes. So tell me about your code. This guy? Okay. If that. Okay. Let's start with just this guy, though. Yeah. Oh no, mine's optional. Whoa. What do you want to coalesce to? Neato. So if false. Got it. Okay. If. Let's keep going. Return true. Is that it? Talk us through what's going on here, though. So this argument string is actually, if we print it out, which we should have done before to debug it. I didn't know what our arguments were. So let's say every time I type anything, the only thing that happens right now is we print out whatever this argument is so I can figure out what the heck it is. What the heck is it? It is something. What? Oh my goodness. It looks like it's just that last character after all. W O W space L O O K space T H I S space W O W space. This is so helpful. This is also a cry for help for anyone watching or listening to this video. They won't let me escape. <laughs> so string is just the last thing you typed. So I didn't have to use any of that NS range crap? OK. Whoa. All right, so let's see what happens here. If it returns true, tell me what happens when it returns true. What question is this asking? Um, 
Cool. For now, let's just see what happens with this if else business. So if it contains that, so right now I'm typing the letter P, nothing happened. O, O's in there. I can type O again, maybe we'll handle that later. I'm typing I, it's not working. U, I forgot the letters. Y, T, R, E. Oh nice, the E works. W, Q, A, S, D, F. J, H, no, G, H, you get it. So this is only allowing you to put an input. This function right here tracks the last input. The Boolean value that it returns is, should we include this? So you're not actually changing anything in text field should change characters in range. Instead, you were just evaluating the last input and saying, should I actually put that into your text field? That's all this function does. Oh, I just cracked my back. That was so good. How do you deal with in multiple So the computer runs much faster than your hands do. So mm -hmm. So now we have to set up the next part of the logic which is maybe going to keep track of that set of let that group of letters and remove it if it contains it. So that's a separate thing. Right now we're just handling the input, ha something happening in the view. Yeah, I know. Yes. Remember NS range? Who the fuck cares? We don't need it. That was directed at the computer, not at you. I'm very sorry. We don't need it right now. We might need text field for something else. But the big super important thing here is this replacement string, which we call string as a parameter, is of type string. And all it is right now is the last character coming in. The return of this function is a bool. And it's answering the question, should I change the characters in whatever this range thing means? And if you return true, it's going to include that replacement string. If you return false, it's not going to return anything. We could have this set to do other stuff before we return true. So we could say like, I don't know, this thing's label dot text is equal to nah nah the letter is then interpolate string. So it's not just necessarily that we want to say whether you can update it or not. We might also want to do things in response to that letter. Maybe. It's interesting. I'm kind of stuck here, right? I can't backspace. Looks like I'm screwed. Do we have to call another function inside this function? What do you think? Say that again? Just the changing the text of that label. It's unsightly and it shouldn't do what it should. Um, maybe if I said String is not equal to that. Did that work? Dang. What do I do? Oh, man. Can you walk me through that? Cool. So this is literally saying, you can only do anything in my text field only. The only time you can do it 
Otherwise, get out, don't try anything, is if the string coming in is one of the letters in our game, or if the string is an empty string. Let's find out more about our inputs. Why is backspace an empty string? Detect backspace in empty UI text field. Oh my god, that's what we're doing. Huh. We don't know anything about Objective-C or that stuff, so I don't care. No, that's not what we're looking for. Detect backspace in UI text field Swift. Wow. Detect backspace event in UI text field. Nice. Wow, they did what we did. They said the text field's delegate to self. And now they're using the same, I know that we don't understand this language, but they're using the same function we did. If you let your eyes kind of glaze over it, you see this is a text field. Cool, it's got a text field called text field. It should change characters in range. Well, it's the same across Swift and Objective-C. It's almost like UIKit provides both of these things to them. Cool. Let's talk about Swift. Huh. I don't know what that is. What's a strukum? What is strukum? Strukum. Swift. Wow. Wait. When I type that in, strukum, it comes up with a lot of different languages. Interesting. Let's find out just what strukum is. Oh, wow. Strukum. What is it? Strukum. In C programming, it returns a negative zero or positive depending on whether the object pointed to by S1 is less than or equal to or greater than Strukum. Who cares? We don't know what that is. I was trying to detect backspace out of UI text field delegate. Why is it 92? I don't know why the result of C string in backspace is zero. Who cares? Let's analyze a little bit of code. String is an empty string, as when you delete a character, the text field tries to replace it by nothing. Nice. So when we hit backspace, backspace itself isn't actually an empty string. But the string that is being added, so what's being changed, is nothing. So when you delete a character, the text field tries to replace it with nothing. Due to number one, character holds only a string terminator, who cares? Um, great. Look how many levels our code works on. I talked to Adam last week, and I told him about something called the Turing test, and then within an hour he was thinking, what was the video, like, do robots have emotions? Can robots be creative? Like, was it? Do you want to share it with the class? Can you please share it with the class? I, think, I bet other people would like it too. There are so many rabbit holes that you can go down with code. I would say try to have them be productive. Try to learn from what you are looking at. If you feel like you're not learning, stop. I didn't feel like I was learning anymore. I found out that the string being added was an empty string that got me my answer. I could learn more about this strukum, which seems to be in like a whole bunch of different languages. Right now, who cares? Um, it's not helping me accomplish my goal. But maybe you're much more interested in it. Go for it. However, right now I'm coding in front of a class. And so I stopped myself from getting too far down that rabbit hole. Let's go back. Let's see how this works. Is this all we had to do, Rod? Yeah. Cool. So, hiss, hiss, and then I can delete it. Nice. So it handles my input well. It returns true. That's nice. Let's save until after this break right now. Let's save what we're going to do next because we still have to do things in here. But let's commit our work. Yes. Let's add it though. Less than six. 
So we can handle that in a specific way that we don't need to worry about right now. Because if we use if we set up our data in a specific way, we won't need to worry about the count of letters, count of characters. Trust me.